Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady Written by Edith Holden Nature Notes for 906 January Named from the Roman god Janus who is represented with two faces looking in opposite directions as retrospective to the past and prospective to the coming year January 1st New Year's Day, January 6th, 12th Day Epiphany. Then come old January, wrapped well in many weeds to keep the cold away. Yet did he quake and quiver, like to quell, and blew his nails to warm them if he may. For they were numbed with holding all the day, and hatchet keen with which he felled wood and from the trees did loop the needless spray. Mottos. Genevieve frees the pot upon the fire. If the grass do grow in Genevieve, it grows the worse for it all the year. A wet January, a wet spring. The blackest month of all the year is the month of Genevieve. January. The leaves which in autumn of the year fall a burn tinted, leaving reft and bare, their parent trees in many a sheltered lair, where winter waits and watches cold or austere, will lie in drifts, and when the snowdrops cheer, the woodland shadows, still the leaves are there, through and through the glades, the balmy southern air, and birds and boughs. Proclaim that spring is here. Therefore, all seasons shall be sweet to thee, whether the summer clod, the general earth, with greenness, or the red breast sit and sing. Bedwigs in tufts of snow and on the bare branch of mossy apple tree, while the night thatch. Smokes in the sun thaw, whether the eye drops fall, Heard only in the trenches of the blast, or if the secret ministry of frost shall hang them in the silent icicles, quietly shining to the quiet moon. January 1st, New Year's Day, bright and cold with hard frost. January 5th, great gale of wind and rain from the southwest. January 11th, visited a small wood on the canal bank to get violet leaves. On moving away from the dead leaves lying beneath the trees, I discovered a wild arum plant thrusting its white sheath up from the soil. When I removed the outer earring, the pale yellow leaves with dark spots were quite discernible, rolled tightly around each other and beautifully packed away inside the white skin. I noticed that many of the leaf buds on the elderberry bushes had burst into green. January 12th. Saw several more hens feeding on the newly plugged fields not far from a pond. January 14th. Great gale of wind and rain. January 18th. Today I saw a curious oak tree growing in a field near Elmdon Park. From a distance, it looked as if half of the trees were dead and the other half covered with grassy green leaves. On examination, the main trunk and two of the main branches proved to be of a species of oak that had mossy acorn, cups and large, deeply serrated leaves, leafless in winter, growing out of the crown of the trunk and forming fully half of the tree was an evergreen or cork oak in full foliage, the joint in the two trunks was scarcely perceptible. January 23rd. Sharp frost and thick fog in the early morning. The fog cleared off about 9.30 a.m. and the sun shone brightly. Went for a country walk. Every twig on every tree and bush was outlined in silver tracery against the sky. Some of the cleat grasses and seed vessels growing by the roadside were especially beautiful. 
every detail of them sparkling with frost crystals in the sunshine. I saw great flocks of rocks and starlings down the field and a pair of beautiful bullwinches in the half-thrown bush. The gorse was in blossom till within a week or two ago, but the sharp frosts of the past week had nipped off the bloom. The mild winter has brought out the hazel catkins, wonderfully early. The small green flowers were fully expand, and some of the catkins and the pretty little red stars of the female flowers are appearing. The green leaves are out on the woodbine to making little spots of green among the undergrowth. The last few weeks, our own and our neighbor's gardens have been haunted by a few curious robins. The whole of the upper plumage, which in ordinary robins is brown, shaded with olive green, is light silvery gray in this bird, so that when flying about, it looks a white bird with a scarlet breast. I hear that it was seen about here last summer. It is so conspicuous. It is a wonder it has not fallen in victim to somebody's gun. January 27. Primroses, polyanthus, winter aconite, mezaron, snowdrops are all in flower in the garden. Every mild morning now, the birds are singing and they continue more or less throughout the day. January 29. Today I picked some daisies in a field and saw some yew in blossom. The young nettles are shooting up and a number of herbaceous plants are showing new green leaves as foxglove, triacle mustard, ground ivy, etc. The groundsel is in flower too. Plowing and hedging and ditching are going on everywhere. This has been a wonderfully mild January. Daisies see flowers of lowly birth, embroiders of the carpet earth, that gem, the velvet sod. <laughs>